well ciao welcome ciao. <ride> facciamo <Buongiorno>. nell'italiano <ride> yeah. capiranno tutti we're so cosmopolitan you know we could just do this podcast yeah. in so many languages <laughs> amazing um, Well, thank you so much for doing this. So I was really keen to chat to you to kind of get more information about Geyser and what it does and how it does it. So um, I guess I just wanted to kick off really first. Can you just introduce yourself? Like, who are you and what do you do? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much for, for inviting me. Um, humbled to be here. So, yeah, I, I'm Mick. Um, I am a Bitcoiner. Uh, I have worked um, usually in user research, user UI, UX design for four plus years. And the fintech space, I worked one year in crypto, unfortunately, but it was a good experience nonetheless. And um, yeah, my, my, my background, I, I studied anthropology and economics in university, which gave oh. me a kind of, you know, very diverse kind of background uh, to, to see the world in different ways and see that you know no single academic pursuit or frame will tell you everything you need to know the truth it's it's all very um you know it very much depends the the frame depends and you may get different perspectives but truth is always something you have to fight for and discovering and is very nuanced but yeah anyway so i'm um you know really started off you know uh, as a bitcoiner in 2017 and went down the rabbit hole and uh you know super just amazed at this community um uh you know from the very beginning i was saying like either these guys are completely nuts or they've discovered something very very deep and important and um, the more i went down the rabbit hole you know the bitcoin standard was very important for me to kind of bring it back to the economics and the anthropology i think the mm. bitcoin standard actually I like to say does better anthropology than any bitcoin anthropology book i've ever i've ever read in the sense that um Anthropology today concerns itself with human beings and often looks at this sort of minute world of people's belief systems, but it completely rejects any attempt at making sense of the world as it is and um, trying to get to some truth, like truth is all, is all relativized, everything is relativized, nothing is, you know, uh, objectively true. And, um, but, you know, the, with the Bitcoin standard, you come to this understanding that that money is this thing that is like has been evolutionarily um, tested through time. And even though you, you may not be aware of why gold is gold and we you know, attribute such value, history has proved that the scarcer resources are the tools that are um, um, then used to store value through space and time. And um, so, yeah, just, uh, I, you know, I went down the rabbit hole, you know, and, um, you know, went on the lightning rabbit hole Uh, around two years ago, and just found out how, how brilliant and amazing this 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 rabbit hole is, and um, kind of realized that there was all the tooling there, uh, there were all the, all, the, all the infrastructure was was being built, mm. um, but but that very very few applications could actually actually existed that could actually make it truly usable. It's I, I found it to be a bit like if you were in the early days of the internet, yeah. and you had TCP/IP, you had you know. The basic protocol and you could do everything you know you could send a, an email you could you know send messages uh if you knew how to do that technically but if you you know if you didn't know how to use in our case like btc pay server or um a bitcoin wallet you wouldn't know where to start um using it right so um that was sort of you know one of my first insights that made me think okay you know people need to actually like build the application layer of Bitcoin. You know, we have all the infra, we have the protocol level stuff. We have even a lot of infrastructure companies. We have wallets, we have nodes as a service, like Voltage. We have all these different tools, but now we just need platforms. And so my initial idea was, you know, I'm seeing all this activity on Bitcoin, on Lightning. I'm seeing all these people building Lightning applications, uh, sorry, uh, all these uh, um, creators that want to be involved in, in, in Bitcoin, that want to, you know, Uh, do all sorts of things and um and so the initial thought was like we just need a simple play platform where people can tell their story and raise money it's it's guys there's a very very simple idea it's not you know it's not rocket science it's just the idea that instead of crowdfunding through tips on twitter 
for mm. one day and then the thread, thread gets lost forever, you need a place for that project, for that idea, a place where you can also discover relevant ideas, other similar ideas, a place where you can tell your story more in depth um, through like blogs and entries <clears throat> where you can update on the status of the project. So it's really trying to, um, you know, create tooling around this, this, this use case, which is making uh, it possible for anyone to easily create a project and uh, launch your campaigns. Um, and so that's what we started with. And, um, you know, we have, we have been growing a lot and I think our use case has been proven and what we've done in the last, you know, we launched Geyser a year ago uh, with one simple pilot and uh, it was really a small proof of concept. Then we launched seven months ago, uh, the open plot, uh, eight months ago, the open platform. And, um, but, but it was still clunky, it was, you still had to run a node. So only six months ago, actually, have we opened the floodgates. Um, and we did that by making it super simple for anyone to create a project. Mm -hmm. And how we did that is by just using a lightning address. So you don't need to run a node, you just need a lightning wallet with a lightning address. And we essentially stream sats directly to your wallet. So we're non-custodial, even the way that we do it as non-custodial. Um, and, and the point is that, you know, by, by lowering the cost of an effort of creating a project, mm. we've just created this, seen this plethora of, of, of people that are passionate about Bitcoin, that are launching their ideas, that are uh, pursuing their interests in Bitcoin that, and are trying to add value. And um, we're seeing a lot of like developers, open source developers building their tools, but the majority of projects are more non-technically focused. So like things like uh, educators that are, you know, out there producing content, movies right. uh, that are uh, producing books um, that are uh, even going out on the street and just spreading sats around. Um, all these different. <laughs> Is that Joe? Joe Hall. <laughs> there's Joe, but there's many more. There's a lot of people around, uh, you know, in Africa and South America that are just passionate about. We call that um, um, uh, well, orange billing, or uh, there's there's not a tag for that. Uh, I think it's uh, actually I can't remember what it's called to be honest. Um, but but yeah, the, so it's been you know pretty cool to just be able to support the this kind of you know this this use case, this this group of users that aren't usually like as um, as supported. Like and look, I was going to say that kind of fills the gap, fills a gap, doesn't it? Because if you're not raising funding through VCs, then there's that kind of gap between right. you know that that space where it's there's nothing, there's no service that that does that. Right. So I guess Geyser fits that, right? Right, and uh, you know we, we we've seen you know, and it's good. Like Bitcoin is a very technically like you have to be very technically competent to 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 be in here, um, and um, you know, but ha having worked in the sort of Ethereum ecosystem, I have recognized that a lot of the culture is also created around people that are creative, that are um, mm -hmm. uh, that are maybe not as technically competent, but. And it's very, very different. And uh, I'm not a fan of, fan of, fan of how, how the culture is being built there. I think with Bitcoin, you were starting to see, not even you know, sorry, like there has been for many years, but even lately it's been increasing the number of artists and the number of creative mm -hmm. people that are creating culture around uh, around Bitcoin. And these are people that understand the nuances of, of Bitcoin, like why Bitcoin is important, um, that understand the, um, you know, like the, the culture the culture of Bitcoin maximalism, why, why that also that's important. Um, and, and so, yeah, and so really trying to support this, this new group of creatives, um, um, uh, educators, um, uh, but also developers that are wanting to, to build things on Bitcoin and allowing them to easily get found, to easily get funded in whatever on chain, on Lightning, on URL, and on soon Zaps as well. And um, yeah, and, and really start, start from that. That was the foundation. And then on top of that, we build rewards. So rewards are a bit like a store, like you have your own store on Geyser. And um, right now it is still very much, you know, a custodial platform, um, but we're looking to decentralize more and more as we go. And maybe we can get into that at some point. Yeah, definitely. Um, can you just walk through, um, pretend I'm a normie, I mean, I'm not that technical, but more of a normie than I am. Can you walk through describing, because you've thrown a few terms in there, like running a node and zaps and 
all of that kind of stuff. Can you describe for Normi with the experience, I guess, that they have currently of using different UIs to engage with creators and what that actually means in terms of the, I guess, the Lightning Network and uh, Geyser specifically as to how it works? Like what, what is a Lightning node and why did somebody have to run one? And I guess, how right. did you solve that next step to, to remove right. that? So, yeah, so first of all, yeah, really good point. So running a node is, is a critical part of, of, of Bitcoin and why Bitcoin is, is the decentralized money that, that, we, that we call decentralized and, and what dif really differentiates Bitcoin from other, other blockchains. Um, so, right, so if you think about the number of nodes that are, so nodes are essentially running the entire history of Bitcoin transactions. And, and the entire chain uh, is, I think, I think at the moment is actually not very, not very heavy in the sense of there's only so many transactions that are happening. Um, and I believe it's, it's, it can be stored in a hard drive around 300 to 400 megabytes. So even with a one terabyte memory um, and a simple computer um, called a Raspberry Pi, you can run a node essentially run the entire script of the Bitcoin blockchain, and that will allow you to retain sovereignty over, over that. That is basically a voting device. Uh, the miners in Bitcoin are what are uh, sort of um, um, almost verifying the payments, uh, verifying all the transactions, um, but the node is, is what votes basically, is like your voting system for essentially uh, uh, deciding which uh, consensus you are running, which Bitcoin consensus you're running. It, it gets a little bit, a little bit technical, but this is, is so important because it's, it's like with it, you can decide like, you know, that Bitcoin is not going to change you. There's no, even if you're running, a, a, you know, some of these custodial wallets, you're, you're trusting them on all these different levels. Mm. Uh, and even at the level of like, which version of Bitcoin are you using? Because, um, uh, you know, and the, the node runner could be essentially uh, saying, okay, we're going to fork Bitcoin and then use this other chain. And how do you know that you have the true Bitcoin? Well, running a node yeah. is how you, I think I said you were, the, you know, decide that which Bitcoin version you're running, right? Um, now that does, you know, require, it's actually not very expensive. So I recommend everyone giving it a try. It, it takes only like $100 to, to buy a Raspberry Pi and get set up with some of these really cool uh, node running software that exists out there. Like I recommend Umbral, um, um, I think Umbral is a really good one, and you have uh, Start Not Start Nine. I think is another good one. So plenty of really good options just to get started. Understand why self sovereignty is super important. Mm. Um, we can also run it on Voltage. Voltage is a node on the cloud that you can run really, really easily. And uh, yeah, and honestly, running a node is one of the things that helped me click like why Bitcoin is so important. Right? Right. So when it comes to other chains like Ethereum, uh, the, the nodes start. Um, basically getting really heavy. Like it starts becoming almost like very, very difficult to run your node because it's just such a massive amount of, of data. Um, and the reason for that is that in their, in their trade-off, they decided, okay, we'll make bit, you know, our own cryptocurrencies a lot faster to use, right? So they said Bitcoin uh, blocks um, happen every around 10 minutes, right? And so it takes 10 minutes to fully verify each transaction. And you could say, oh, why not, why not make it every minute or every second or every millisecond, right? Well, if you do that, you increase the number of blocks, right? And you increase the amount of, 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 of memory space required to, to keep all these transactions. Um, and, and that's where, yeah, the, the trade-off is like, yeah, you're sacrificing, you're increasing usability and speed in, in, instead of focusing on the, um, on the security of the network, the fact that anyone can easily store the, all the history. Because then if you have millions and millions of transact, you know, of, of, of terabytes of data, like who's gonna be able to, to tell, right? Uh, you're gonna have to yeah. rely more and more and more on centralized uh, companies to tell you what the truth is. Instead, the truth is in your home. And now in Bitcoin, there's more like, there's more, something like 20,000 individual nodes, um, full hmm. nodes, but I think, hundreds of thousands uh, when you cons consider um, all the nodes. So it's incredibly resilient as a system. Like it's probably the most 
um, it's, 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 it's the most um, reproduced digital document that, that exists in the world. Like maybe maybe the Bible is still- the I was most, just going to say the same comparison. Right? It's, a, it's like the right. digital Bible. <laughs> it, it really is. It really is. And, um, um, and it's, it's, it's a sort of single point of truth that we can all rely on. And even if there's a, a nuclear war, um, uh, there will be, you know, places in the world where that, where that, where that document is, sto is stored safely. Right. So, so yeah, that's uh, like, I, that's a kind of the basis of why running a node is super important and, and why it's critical that people learn about it. But, but then we, you know, but then there is a lot of friction, right? So, um, you know, running a node is still a little bit expensive for most people. And, um, and so we decided to, to just increase that as access. Like the way that we see it is that there is just, this- Just one question though, initially right, when you set Geyser up, why was running a node necessary? Like what was it in that process that meant that you needed one in order to accept payments? I yeah, don't know if really that's too question. technical, yeah. but- <laughs> No, it's a, so there's, there's two key reasons. One of the reasons is that us, um, because we didn't have an alternative solution that would not that that would not um, that would not require us to become a custodian and being a custodian us of the money would be a problem from a regulatory standpoint we would have to pay millions of dollars in regular regular to get regulatory clarity we just don't have the money um, um, money transmitter license and all that kind of stuff and then secondly we also didn't want to be a custodian because we could censor and we don't want to you know we don't want to censor. And so being running a non allowing you to create a non custodial wallet means that geyser is really just an interface we're just this this um this platform that connects you to the relevant person and we just see the payments we don't even touch them so um up until that point even like geyser was entirely free as a platform you can just create a project super easily um using your node um but you know still actually not super easily for most people um so you run your node and you're you you own the funds and we're just this interface um and yeah so and also we just launched we actually launched a week after the whole canadian trucker convoy happened right so that was another like okay whatever we do we have to remain non-custodial like custody is of the essence that that it remains in the hands of the user and what that means is that you really truly own your funds by running your node instead of relying on us as a third party to hold those money. Why could, you, why could you not have just had a lightning wallet that people fund you on? What, what would be the difference? Right. So, right. So, yeah, so that's what we did after, right? Um, oh, okay. Right. So the, the challenge there is more technical. So um, mm -hmm. if you're using a lightning wallet, um, there's still like you would be using a like LNURL protocol to, 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 to accept the payment. But there, as an interface, it would be impossible for us to know that the payment actually happened. So uh, we can show the, that URL, but we don't know that the URL has been paid. So that was a problem that existed and still exists today somewhat. Uh, Zaps were able to solve that in a sort of way that works, but it's still not resilient as a system like zaps can still be faked like you can say that you're paying 21 million bitcoin to someone and you're not actually haven't actually done that um because you you have to rely on this on this on this uh noster uh relay to send the correct information and uh, so so we have to know that that that's like that the payment has actually happened right and so we figured out this way uh to do it so that um that you know it's a bit technical but basically we're basically routing the payment. So the way that it works is that you would just use your lightning address to create a project on Geyser. So the lightning address is this very, very cool thing. It's this uh, email like identifier. It looks like an email it could be, um, you know, uh, Krista at walletosatoshi.com, right? And it's something, it's a lightning address that you create that is created from currently mostly custodial lightning wallets, like um, I think, uh, Wallet of Satoshi, Get Albi, um, a Bitnob. Um, there's a, a plethora of Lightning wallets that offer this Lightning address. And um, <clears throat> Lightning address is like email, but for sending Satoshis, right? The, the uh, Bitcoin on Lightning. Currently, it's mostly custodial, but we're we're gonna start seeing, I think, non-custodial wallets adopting uh, Lightning wallets, Lightning addresses as well. 
Um, and the cool thing about it is, is that you can just plug it into Geyser as if it was an email and then start receiving sats, your, your Bitcoin directly into your Lightning wallet. Um, and that's really powerful. Like that's incredible, right? It's like, it's, it's a insanely great user experience because mm. you don't have to input any like, you know, weird numbers or like you just put input your lightning address and then we forward all the Satoshis passing through our node over to your wallet so that we know that the payment has happened. And we apply a small 2% fee, which is nothing compared to like 9% charged by yeah. Kickstarter, for example. To, um, is that how much Kickstarter to, charges? Really? Wow. I think overall it's like something between eight and nine percent. Yeah, it's oh, pretty wow. high. Huh. Um, so, so we charge that two percent also to prevent spam because people could be creating fake transactions and stuff like that. Um, and so, and so, but we do that like in a very very smart non custodial way as well. So we could never truly take the funds because we we actually what we do is that we send you the money to the to the creator of the project before we receive it from the sender. So there's no way that we could actually ever hold that money. It's like this sort of smart contract that we're using that allows us to run famous or node, but while being non-custodial. So it's a very, very powerful tool, you know, and just tries to make the user experience really, you know, amazing. Uh, trying to really focus on making, uh, as, a, as a creator, to just plug in your lightning address um, uh, from your Lightning wallet and just get going with your project. You don't have to worry about running a node. And we're just conscious that there is a plethora of people out there that just want to get started in Bitcoin, maybe don't have enough patience to, to, to run their node on, or are not too technical. And we shouldn't limit these people. Like Bitcoin is a sort of, you know, this gradient of like highly competent technical people um, that are, you know, holding the torch of self custody and, um, um, and, and like, you know, uh, liberty really, I think freedom and then people that are still getting started that understand Bitcoin, but, you know, are still learning and we shouldn't, we shouldn't, you know, keep these people away. Like we should still give them yeah. the tools. So, and just to also, but that's also how you them. scale, isn't it? I mean, it's like the, you know, right. none of us use services that are difficult to use. Like I don't, I'm not a mechanic, but I still drive a car. Um, right. You know, so exactly. you need to, the expectation that everybody should be technically competent in Bitcoin is just not reasonable. So I think, yeah, you're right. There has to be that interface that makes it super easy. And then that's how it just becomes the norm. And we sort of shift to that Bitcoin standard. Right. I mean, ideally we still, you know, because I'm still not super happy about having people get their money in all these custodial wallets, because it's still, you know, you're still trusting these, these, these parties, but but it, it is, you know, the first step and to, the first step to get started in Bitcoin. And when you have a significant amount, when you have $100, $1,000 on your wallet and you're like, okay, I should put this somewhere else, right? Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's, it's kind of, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense, actually. So and, and another way that I see it is that Bitcoin is this incredible thing that has all these different properties, right? It has these, these, these use cases, right? So if you think about it, right? So First of all, Bitcoin is, is borderless, right? It's borderless. It doesn't have, it doesn't follow any jurisdiction. You know, it, it's just, you can use it anywhere around the world um, um, and with no, with no problem. So that's incredibly powerful. If you compare it to trying to send money, you know, using your bank account from, you know, from <laughs> United States to Nigeria, like you're going to be charged a lot of money, but it's even going to be difficult to do. You might not even yeah. be able to send money. It's not so, even in the United States to Nigeria. Believe me, I've moved money from moving around so much, lots of different jurisdictions. And yeah. I, I look at that and I think anyone that thinks that Bitcoin isn't going to become the default payment network is mad because the right. existing system is so expensive, so inefficient. It's just. <laughs> yeah. So that's the second point, right? So it's, it's really expensive, right? So Lightning makes payments almost free, basically. Mm. Right? Um, speed. Like instant lightning. payments, right? Um, lightning again. Then you have self, like uh, self sovereignty, right? That's, that's powerful. That's another really powerful thing. Like no one can take it away from you if you're running, if you have your Bitcoin, you know, in your hardware wallet on your in your in your head. Like no one can can fuck with you. Like that's an incred incredibly powerful thing. Um, you have permissionlessness. Like anyone can start building on Bitcoin. Like nobody. I had to go to no bureaucratic office asking if I could build on Bitcoin. I just fucking built on Bitcoin. 
you know, that's incredible, incredibly powerful. If you want to do something like that for payments on on, on, a, on a fiat on ramps, you need to like go through all sorts of KYC. You need to go to Stripe and do some sort of KYC or KYC, KYB. Just it's 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 hell, right? It's 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 difficult. Yeah. It's expensive and it's time consuming. And then it just creates so many problems on an ongoing basis with things like that. I mean, I just found, I think for me as well, a real, real kind of not turning point, but it really brought home to me how important Bitcoin is in, from a sort of freedom perspective as when PayPal censored that free speech organization in the UK. I can't remember yeah. what they were called now. I closed all my PayPal accounts, all yeah. my business PayPal accounts, all my personal PayPal accounts. And I was like, I'm never touching that service again. Because the mere fact that they would entertain shutting down a business that was operating illegally, but it was a free speech organization. I mean, I was just like, could you be any more nefarious if you tried? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was no, just it's horrific. Bizarre. Yeah, yeah it's, it was horrific. It's completely bizarre. Um, but yeah, the yeah, it's 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 uh, it's another you know the self self um, self custody and. Uh, um censorship resilience element is, is super super important so as you can see we just nominated like five different properties but but there's many more mm -hmm. um and, and i think the another element of of the um of the permissionlessness element is, is is actually you know very underrated because it really means that anywhere on the world can, be, can build anything with no permission right if you're a guy there's there's a merit meritocratic element in here that is so important anyone if you're if you've just got a computer anywhere in the world, if you've grown, grown up poor, uh, don't have any documentation, if you're living in freaking like Lesotho or whatever, you can you can build a Bitcoin application without asking anyone for permission, right? Yeah, that you can build a Bitcoin possible. business essentially without asking anyone for permission. Yeah. yeah, you can build your business and ask for you know use Bitcoin as payment and and like it's incredibly powerful. Like what that means at a societal level, it means that we're all really the same. Like it's we're all equal we all have we all the rules apply to us all the same right um and there's many many more so for our use case um uh, you know we think the self-sovereignty element is very important so if you're running your node you can use geyser um but if you don't have a node and self-sovereignty isn't your problem you should still be able to leverage these other properties of bitcoin mm -hmm. through the crowdfunding you know, tool. So if you just if you're just a musician, right, and you're not doing anything controversial, and you just want to raise money from around the world, right, you can still use guys are using a lightning address. And so you can still leverage four of these five powerful properties, or uh, many more properties that Bitcoin uh, enables. So yeah, I should, you know, you should think about Bitcoin really like that, like, uh, as this sort of Pandora's box of, of tools, and you don't have to use all of them. But like, as long as you understand the power of one, you can build anything, right? Mm -hmm. And so, with Geyser, our our main, you know, our main kind of um, thesis is that that there is a role for global crowdfunding, like global and censorship resistance, but but especially global because ninety five percent of projects don't don't care too much about custody, and even then, our tool, um, even Lightning addresses could down the road be non custodial. Um, but for example, there are so many uh, you know people in Africa doing work you know around the for Bitcoin or even not around Bitcoin that want to be able to crowdfund from you know from from where they are uh, towards their projects and and right now yeah. pretty much all the crowdfunding platforms out there um, only operate in thirty countries so yeah. like if you think about what that means right like you know what does it mean that so far Kickstarter and Indiegogo have really only operated in Europe and America. Like what, yeah. what does that mean? What would it mean to connect the world through value? Like that's something that we have still no idea about. We're still playing, we're still experimenting with. And it's it's right like now, the internet on steroids in some ways. Right. I mean, I think that was actually with the truckers yeah. was one of the issues that these crowdfunding platforms, particularly GoFundMe. I mean, I know lots of people that don't use that platform anymore um, because of what happened with the seizure of the funds. And then obviously right. I think the other one got hacked. So, I mean, it just, uh, yeah. It, it's really it really does open up a, a whole different world and the fact that you can so easily access you know creators and service providers globally you don't even need to know who they are you literally just have like a task that you want done 
and somebody can pay you and you don't even have to know where they are like, or who they are. <laughs> it's mad. It's really mad. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, like you say, I don't think we can even envision at this point what that's going to make things look like. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're experimenting now. And, you mm. know, like you said, this is like an Internet 2.0, but instead of transferring just information, we're transferring value. So yeah. it's, I, I, I think is that it's going to create just new economies, like ec uh, economies of builders that we've never even yeah. envisioned before. It's really... As an, as an anthropologist, do you sort of, uh, do you ever kind of sit there and think about this and try and imagine what, what might happen? So having studied kind of how societies interact and evolve, I guess, or how humans evolve, do you ever play that mind game and sort of sit there and imagine what might happen and try and predict, yeah. I guess? <laughs> yeah, look, I, I don't know. Uh for sure always like constantly thinking about like what the hell is going on right now right um i think yeah i mean there's so many different ways that we can talk about this um did you have anything specific in mind with how uh, in terms of like the future in terms of like bitcoin as a as a, as a, as a system like what does a bit hyper bitcoinized world look like or like i guess i mean it's probably too broad a question but it's it's interesting so for example jeff has that jeff booth has that comment that he made i, I quote it really often he actually tweeted it but he I, i'm gonna miss misquote it now but it's something like if a, if the current system is built on lies i.e money that's not sound that's um you know is a lie i guess essentially it's incorrect information what would what emergent complex society would come from having a system built on truth? I've completely misquoted the quote, but it was something like that. Essentially, yeah, what he true. was trying to say was, you know, when if the money is sound, imagine what society would look like when it's built on truth. But I've never really heard anyone kind of speculate what that might look like. I mean, we can imagine lots of things like we can imagine, you know, maybe less corruption, a separation of money for money and state. We can imagine very few wars if any because they just wouldn't be funded people just wouldn't have an incentive to fight each other if it wasn't for the sort of special interests that sit in there um i don't know i guess maybe it's too broad a question but i just wonder sometimes if you've yeah. ever speculated like where this trajectory might go yeah look i i think i think jeff jeff is one of the, the leading thinkers when it comes to this i, I love this book the, the the price of tomorrow really recommend everyone to read it what what i really like take away from that is is the fact that technology is is and maybe just to explain the thesis a little bit of the book that um technology is deflationary right technology drives prices of things down like the smartphones today are probably 10 to 20 times cheaper what they were 10 years ago and better like Technology and the market, which is a type of technology, a markets, uh, economics technology, drives prices down. So that's the first thesis. The second thesis is that technology is going everywhere. Technology is not just software uh, in a computer. Technology is your car that you're driving. Like it could be uh, an electric car, but it could even be an Uber. Like the, the, the motor and transit system is could be technified um it could be like you know your home like smart homes uh it could be just the way that homes are produced just driving home prices down um um but it could also but it could also be like money like money and uh and the way that he frames it is that bitcoin is the technology of money is uh. the properties of money of technology the deflationary properties of technology that are seeping into the realm of money and money has been leaking like michael saylor says says it's like this it's just like this 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 melting iceberg right it's this melting ice cube that leaks like um and you know mm. like we used to do back in the days like george washington died because he was you know being uh, um i forget what it's called when they sort of take blood out of your system because they think that oh uh leech you know I, mean? I think leech, leeching right. Yeah, um, because he had, you know, but, but he actually died to death because of lack of blood. Right. So the system as it is today is similar in the sense that they, you know, they, they keep on, you know, leeching the economy 
with inflation because inflation is deemed to be actually a good thing and there's a natural inflation concept of two percent that not what we should be striving to do and it's leeching the system of two percent of value every single year when it goes well the truth is it's actually been five to ten percent in western countries and up oh, it's to more than that much. Yeah. yeah, if you consider real estate, it's probably like 15%. I think Safidina Musa has some really good, uh, good insights into that. But basically, technology um, is, is deflationary. Technology is seeping into everything. And the third thing is Bitcoin as money is, is, what, um, is that Bitcoin is the technology of money. And what it does is that it drives the price of things down, meaning it's deflationary properties make life more bearable. And I think that's like the, the most powerful kind of thought like that I've come across in the last few years, just because it helps you understand that deflation um, will just, will just is actually, it is so important in terms of making life um, like good. Like in, in, it, 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 it's actually, it will make life better because it will drive prices of things down relative to Bitcoin. So do you do you kind of envision that as as the sort of human struggle will become less so? It will become less of an economic struggle. That's right. I think that's that's a key insight is the fact that that Bitcoin um, can make life like bearable. Like it it will not yeah. be the struggle that it is today. I think the struggle that a lot of people sense and experience today is because Oh. of inflation it's it's just sort of like in the movie in the matrix it's like it's this thing that you 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 know exists but you can smell it but you can't see it you can't you can't really you know there's something wrong but you don't know what it is mm. well it's a bit abstract there's many there's many things that are wrong in the world don't get me wrong but inflation is this is this growing leeching uh, mm. that happens that just sucks energy out life force out of the system out of human beings yeah i mean because the problem is it, it punishes yeah. value creators and and that system of money printing rewards the people that are nearest the money printer so essentially the fraudsters the counterfeiters get rewarded and the right. people that are actually building and creating value get punished it's, it's true yeah i guess what it would do is it would it would remove the economic struggle from the human condition and i suppose the next step from that is then what would people be doing in terms of actualization or self-fulfillment right. or whatever it might be when they're not worrying about I think everyone's still gonna or... have, I think everyone's still gonna be trying to stack sets. Like that's not gonna go away. Like you're still gonna wanna stack sets. You're still gonna wanna work. And as a Bitcoiner that you have plenty of Bitcoin, you're still gonna wanna work and produce value. I think it just um, it just it removes that element of, of 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 stress that people have, and maybe also of fear. I mean, one thing I, I was I found really interesting working in the U.S. was how much people's jobs, for example, were tied down, or how how tied they were rather to their jobs, because right. their health insurance was linked to the right. job that they had, and because yeah. health insurance wasn't just freely available, you know, at, at the point of need. Um, it it just became a, a big consideration where people would plan their careers around where they would work because of the health benefits and I remember looking at that and thinking how is it that the U.S. is a hub of entrepreneurship when that's a consideration that people have to have when they're thinking about how to organize their life it just I mean, it struck me as very strange slavery, I mean it is yeah 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 I mean to be honest inflation is slavery I mean you're basically working without consent to you know prop somebody up who's next to a money mm -hmm. printer I mean in its purest terms it is I think it's a bit like you said with the matrix though isn't it it's a bit like being a fish in water it's so ubiquitous and you've always lived with it that you don't see it until you kind of step out of that matrix and go hang on a minute like does this actually make sense right it's, uh, yeah you should are you are you creative from a writing perspective because I think it'd be awesome if somebody wrote like a fictional book but imagining what the world's going to look like and that journey oh. that, that, and, you know, like almost like a sci-fi, but, you know, then we can look back in 50 years and see if it came true. <laughs> I know, I know there are some stories. I think there's one, it's called 21. It's being, uh, I think, uh, I forget. I need to, I can, uh, I can look more into, but there's 21 stories. I think it's called it. It's about 21 stories about what a hyper Bitcoinized world might look like. There's oh, also really? a really good movie. Have you, have you seen that 10 minutes movie called the, uh, um generational wealth no it's, 
Oh, I'll need to send you a link. It's super amazing by Tomer Storlight and the uh, director Hoddle. Um, oh, about... wait, I did see one of his. I think I did. Right. Yes, I have yeah. seen that one. It's on YouTube, isn't few. it? Yeah, yeah. He's made, a, he's made yes. another one called Bitcoin is Beautiful as well, which is really good. Uh, but yeah, we need more. We need more creatives and creators and think about like what, what will that look like and how try to start, start painting a picture of, of, of that. Um, uh, yeah, you know, definitely. I'm building a platform, I want people to to to, to use it and uh, build and, it, and they will come. Um, so right. talk to me a little bit about the people that are actually on the platform. Like, who was your first crowdfunder, and and what kind of a what sort of a array of crowdfunders do you have now? Right. So right now we have more than three hundred forty projects on Geyser. It's crazy to think how many there are. Um, we we started off, the first project was this guy in Nigeria who wanted to, to do a Bitcoin workshop and uh, or a conference. And uh, he then, you know, you know, to, to test out this concept, we like, this is perfect. Let's see if people are willing to fund him. And so this was a year ago and we launched his campaign and he raised more than $2,000 in just a week um, from the Bitcoin community. For us, that was a mind blowing moment because it was like, holy shit. So Bitcoin isn't just about hodling. It's like, no, like we were right in, in testing that thesis. And our thesis was Bitcoiners are willing to give away their sats if it's for something that brings value to them and to the network. Mm -hmm. And we saw that we had more than, I think, 150 different people funding in just over, over a week and a half, uh, $2,000. And so that's when we kind of started, OK, let's take this more seriously. We started building it and then we started opening it up one one project every week and then in october last year we opened that up for anyone and ever since we've seen i think the majority of projects have to do in one way or another with education so maybe you are uh, doing a, a small meetup or maybe you are um you know want to write a book um so it's like in the intersection between education and creative creative pursuits um but overall it's people that have a particular passion um or or skill and their passion about Bitcoin and they just bring those two things together. It's 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 mind blowing. Like, right. So we have, for example, Tatum Tatum Turnup. Like he does Bitcoin. Like he started on he started on Geyser as just a silly idea he threw on on, on our application form. And like, this is a brilliant idea. Let's get it up there. And he's just like this uh, you know creative guy, this this comedian type person um, that that wanted to do something related to like interviewing Bitcoin or he felt that the Bitcoin space was too much about um, technical and price and stuff. And he just wanted to bring the human perspective in. And so he ended up, he now invites, you know, prominent Bitcoiners to have chats. Uh, and yeah, he, he has his own little, you know, side gig. That That's right. It's called between value. two ASICs, isn't it? Which is, is kind of a take right. on that. Um, who's the other comedian that does that between two fans? Georgia Falozakis. I can never spell it. But Something yeah. like that. Yeah. I came across Tatum because no I did problem. Anthony Pompliano's crypto course and he was one of the alum from there. So he was in a cohort before me, but he used to every oh. now and then turn up to some of the sessions. And he was always just so funny. I was thinking this guy's just so nuts. He's just got no, no, like, uh, what's the word? Um, you know, he's, he's just, it lacks any kind of uh embarrassment about anything he'll say anything to anyone he was just so funny um and I've watched a few of the ones that he's done I mean they're just hilarious I was like that was actually one thing I was thinking the other days we don't see that many comedians in this space right. and it's so ripe for it I mean I've yeah. interviewed a, a meme maker who's based in Canada Bitcoin Becker and I mean oh, her right. memes are just hilarious they're outrageous and um, but I thought, God, you know, there's a lot of meaning, but there isn't like stand up comedy. And I was like, where are all the stand up comedians? <laughs> right. But there's so more, much to make more. fun of. That's, that's <laughs> there are. There's a massive gap in the market. So if you're funny, you know, consider getting started. Right. Definitely. Um, um, but, but yeah, there, there's also like people that are, you know, building that are doing a lot of movies and films. Right. You have yeah. uh, a lot of films on Geyser you know, uh, raising which, funds. Which ones do you have then? Because I know that you've got Pierre Corbin's raising for his films on there. So Alana Mediavilla right. is doing Dirty Coin, the mining documentary. And then who else do you have in the film space? Right. Um, so very soon we're going to be actually releasing a feature that will allow you to uh, look in more detail at, um, uh, at these different categories. My category. So, I, do, I was going to ask you that because I was playing around on the guys yeah. interface the other day and I was like, how do I find a project without knowing the URL um, or the link? So I know it's, uh, 
Yeah, so it's actually coming out today. This is, uh, you know, we're going to have a big announcement today. Uh, we weren't able to get it by, to, by the, this interview, unfortunately, but we'll That's be able fun. to see it soon. But yeah, we have, uh, you know, we have uh, quite a few, honestly. Um, we have, huh, good question. I, I honestly don't remember the exact names. There's quite a few, though. I know fine, I'll put you on the spot, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean, uh, there's a, like Pleb Music, you know, Max, um, he, he actually is one of the guys who grant uh, for producing videos around uh, Costa Rica about Bitcoin. You know, oh, nice. um, you have, you know, the, 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 the Great Reset. Um, you actually do have the Generational Wealth is, is on there as well. Um, wow. Between two ASICs, it's not really quite a movie, but like it's a show. Yeah. Um, trust trust documentary is a, a very What's very that? good one by um oh it's a really really good one by john um by good I recommend you uh, i'll pack soon there's educators like yeah confess people that are going around the world around meetups doing education doing you know workshop or what is bitcoin you have what are the, what are the know, kind of terms and conditions crowdfund the last you know few, few months oh, ago did, did they crowdfund oh that's interesting i didn't know that they were on geyser wow huh and um, what are the yeah, kind so of they, terms and conditions so, so really somebody, of, i was gonna say sorry if somebody sorry. fundraises what are the kind of t's and c's for them then do they just tell people this is what we're planning on doing this is what you're funding and what expectation do the funders have do they receive updates do they get some kind of i don't know like privileged access to the premiere I don't, I don't know what it might be but what's what's the general kind of construct for it of the interaction i guess between fundee yeah. and funder that's a really good question so right now it's uh it's as you could call it uh take it all so you get all the funds there is no you know con conditionality uh -huh. um so that's for the donation side of things when it comes to the rewards you can purchase a specific reward right a bit like it's oh. really like a store uh, it's really like a store uh, so for example this is this is what um crypto cloaks did is that you know he sold he wanted to buy this really big printer and uh to do that he sold random things he had like he had a newspaper from el salvador from the bitcoin day um he had you know actually pre-sales of what he would print with this new printer so we really trying to crowdfund um, to achieve this one goal of buying this mega printer. And uh, so it really could be anything. It could be a perk. Actually, people are selling Noster badges on Geyser. Like there's all sorts of things. You could, you could sell ordinals, inscriptions on Geyser. You could, it's really just like an interface, you know, and, um, and you can you know, purchase things and sell things. And in that sense, the condition is that you do send across that reward once, yeah. once it's been purchased. But something that we are going to be working on next actually is um is the concept of all or nothing so the idea that <clears throat> you have a goal if you reach that goal within um in the goal in satoshi if you reach a goal within that established time period you take the funds if you don't reach a goal the funds go back to the senders so in this oh, case okay. it actually creates a better incentive system for people to fund because they know that they will be able to get it back if if the if the pro project is not going to happen but if if it but instead the project will go and will increase the chances of it going uh actually succeeding if the goal is reached so, so they have if, like a, an amount that they say they want to fundraise and if they manage to hit that amount to then do the project then right. it goes ahead exactly. and if i say right that yeah. makes sense but it's still but it's still be sending it so it's not pledging it's like you're actually sending the money and we're working on different com and different ways of of enabling that in a way that's also non-custodial so that you know if you're yeah essentially it gets locked in the funds get locked in um and then they can either go to the creator or go back to the funders so that that right. will create insane like alignment of incentives that will spark a lot a lot more projects i think because uh it's a less hard for the creator to manage if they're in that yeah. in where the goal is not achieved yeah yeah that makes sense um is it is it I, I know we talked about doing this but are you able to screen share and just maybe show a demo of what it looks like for people so if anyone's mm -hmm. watching they can see and just kind yeah, of yeah, verbally definitely. walk through it 
Um, let me just give you share access. I think I think that this works on record. So hopefully on screen record, we should be able to see it. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah, this is what Geyser looks like. Uh, it's, it's about to look like. So um, it's actually incomplete. But you can see that this is the discovery page on the landing page on Geyser. And what you can do here is you can select by different tags. So you can say, okay, we were lucky talking about films. All right, let's look at what films are on Geyser, right? So oh, uh, you know, nice. actually, there's quite a bit actually here, uh, more than I had remembered. Bitcoin is less than 20 seconds, Dirty Coin, uh, Trust, wow. Bitcoin between 26. So you can see all these different films, uh, or you can be like, okay, what about bit films and culture? Which Bitcoin films and culture projects exist? Um, and you can see here, you know, uh, sorry. Huh. You can see here culture. You've got all sorts of projects. You have, you know, Project Yellow, Bitcoin meets Frankfurt. You know, like people. Oh, it's Project Yellow. Life. That's the meme factory guy. That's the meme factory guy. Yeah, yeah. Right. So they're selling a little um, a, a plushy, plushy, <laughs> plushy. Um, you, which again, as you said, you know, this is like a reward. So you can see. Okay, you can adopt, adopt a yellow, yellow. for ninety nine dollars. <laughs> And so just to explain how this works, you know, you can add a comment uh, and then you can, the way that you, that it works that you add your contact email and you don't have to actually log in. So you can do this without even logging into Geyser and notice okay. I'm not logged in, um, but you do have to add your email if you fund with a reward so that the creator can, can get back in touch with you. Right. And then if you fund a project, you get a QR code, you can pay on chain, you can pay on lightning. You can also oh, so pay you could well. literally just scan the QR code. You just do the, the action that you've done, scan the QR code and then make the payment. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It's literally three clicks. It's like one, two, and then you just pay. Like good luck trying to do that with, uh, with credit card, right? It's, it's uh, the user experience is just so much better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I you mean, just copy that. Yeah. The Lightning Network's just going to wipe out any other payment system. I don't see how it can't. I mean, the user experience is just so superior. It's just totally. not even, it, it's not even comparable. That's incredible. Yeah. So you can look at, you know, podcasts and see what podcasts are on Geyser. So here you can be like, okay, wow. So connect the world, value stuff, Bitcoineros. And you can be, like, okay, what about, you know, podcasts in Africa? I can see, okay, well, there's Phyllis Mola. Phyllis Mola. Uh, but what about podcasts? <laughs> Yeah, that's probably not uh, the German version that I just said there. But yeah, you, you know, projects in Africa, look at that. Like there's, you know, quite a lot of different pro projects around education. You know, these are all the education programs in Africa. Um, wow. There's you know, and like entrepreneurial projects that are trying to, uh, you know, plans. Um, there's, there's also interesting, interesting initiatives. There, this, this, Help you see ninety percent just have to do with, with Bitcoin, but we're starting to see projects that are not just Bitcoin related, but are um, you know, Bitcoin is becoming the medium rather than the message. Like you can create projects about anything, people can fund you. Um, really, so like, you know, United States. You know what's going on in the United States? There's quite a lot of projects, right? Um, so. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of activity, and uh, and in the in the landing page we'll be able to show a little bit more detail. Um, we'll be able to show a little bit more detail the, the 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 top the top projects. So actually, this is still uh, not not the production. So you won't. This is not the live stuff. But you'll be able to see all the trending projects mm -hmm. by category. So what are the top project? The top three projects when it comes to Bitcoin education or Bitcoin culture and Bitcoin uh, community. Um, uh, you know, you have a lot of different projects here. Let's look at that. Can you just walk through as well, if you've got time, just some of the projects when you're talking about this kind of social media type aspect where people can give updates? What does that look like if you're if you're kind of doing that as a user? Right. So if you if you um, so if you're if you're if you've created a project, so if you've funded a project, you can actually follow it. So this is still um, you can follow uh, so it. There's like a follow button. OK, right. And then if you fund it, you follow it automatically. And then what's, once that happens, you can, if you're logged in, you can get all updates about the project uh, status. Ah, uh, okay. So I'd have to log in. 
Uh, I can log in with Twitter, Lightning, so you'll be able to log in with Noster. And when you do that, you'll be able to essentially get all the updates of the projects um, directly. Hmm. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, yeah, and you know, we have we also have more plans to be more Noster native as well. So we we still we're still planning that out. But expect to be, you know, to see all transactions that are happening on Geyser, to see them on Noster and vice versa. You know, you can fund from Noster. You can fund from Noster already uh, into Geyser. So actually, so let's look at a project here, for example, you know, um, let's look at, you know, for example, Bitcoin data, right? These are, you know, women doing great work around Bitcoin education in Kenya, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, what you see here is a lightning address. So this oh, is the okay. address that allows us to see and know that a payment has gone through, right? Mm -hmm. So you can send this on, you know, you can use this on Noster. Um, if you're not familiar with Noster, Noster is like a Twitter-like uh, uh, protocol um, that allows you to get tipped really easily. And so if you use this as your tipping address, um, all the funds will be received on here. So um, really becomes a... You know, guys, it becomes the, the, the aggregation of all the different mm. activities that are happening. So one. Really so so essentially, the project uh, would go. Sorry, the project would go on to Nosta. They would post that address. People could use that address to send funds on Nosta. So essentially, as though it was like in in the chat form on the social media platform, or social right. media protocol, I should say, and then that will be aggregated on the guys of fundraising screen. Right. Got right. it. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, so the only difference is that because Noster zaps are not like can, are not really verified, Geyser you know verifies that the payment has actually been made and it's not like a scam, a scam payment. Um, but yeah, exactly. That's the point. Like you we aggregate all transactions coming from zaps from Noster, but even from podcasting 2.0. So if you have a podcast, if you if you're in a podcast now and you're in your zap and you're you're tipping, you're boosting this 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 podcast. Um if you use this lightning address or actually the the pub key of of your node um and you use that in the splits well the funds would go here so for example citadel dispatch receives seventy nine thousand contributions because they they have they're tying in every every single <laughs> uh, boost on fountain or any other Podcasting app, Fountain, Blue Wallet is received, obviously on Citadel Dispatch's node, but we listen to that. We know that the payment has happened. So we become this sort of aggregate source that allows you to see all the activity that is happening and also establish the leaderboard. So you can see here, okay, Brad Mills funded. This is actually a payment happened on Geyser because he, you know, you can see he, he logged in and funded 1 million sats. But there's a lot of people that have been funding. Look at this person. This user funded 1,169 times. And you can click and you can, you know, in the future, you could provide this user with rewards, right? Uh, with badges and things like that. And you can see here 3,000 uh, contributions. So they've done uh, it on the Fountain app and they're just pinging to boost stuff when they're listening. Right, exactly. So this All is right. another property, another property that, that, you know, we hadn't talked about a little Bitcoin, but the, the interoperability element of it mm. is, is is so powerful, and um, and what what it basically means is um, is that payments happening on different platforms can be viewed or can be listened to by other platforms. The fact that it's this, you know common language that we can all speak and we don't need to ask permission to, to view. So what that means is that we can you know aggregate all this activity and help you know. Uh, projects get funded toward their their, their 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 ideas and their projects and their their uh, goals that's super interesting i mean the scope for this is immense i can't even imagine how your brain must be on fire thinking about the possibility of what you do what you can do and then you know trying to deal with the practicalities of actually just doing the hard work of building it while while kind of ideating all of the crazy stuff that this could turn into but yeah, it looks amazing. I love the tagging. I love the tagging. I love that you guys have done that. That makes yeah. it so much easier. So much easier. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and you can, you can tag along and you can see the relevant projects that you're interested in, right? 
Yeah. yeah. And so the so, tagging is going to go by any, do you create the tags or can anyone create a tag? Who's doing the tags on me? Do the tags. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got uh, the location and so on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, you can create a, a, a tag with whatever you want. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't like proofread it or anything. Gosh, you're really We're decentralizing this, aren't you? <laughs> Well, we're just starting. It's still in our database, but there's definitely ways that we can integrate more with Noster. So each of these projects could be a Noster, a Noster profile, um, really. And when that happens, you know, the, the creators can actually hold the keys to the project so that we, we can't even shut a project down because it just, it just exists. Um, on the protocol, the owner owns the keys. We just host the project. And um, yeah, that's sort of, you know, the key the key thing, the proposition that Bitcoin makes possible. So, you know, what, why not use it? Why not? Why not leverage the power of decentralization um, as much as uh, it, it makes sense? And, and the key thing I think there is that you know all the content would then not just sit on Geyser; it would sit on any other. It could sit on any crowdfunding platform out there as well. Like Geyser is just one interface among many, and. Um, and, 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 you know, the, the power of that is that you can get funded from anywhere. So you're more successful on Geyser because you're not just on Geyser. You're not just in the style of the platform. You exist, you know, out there. Um, people can fund you from no, from any Nostra client. Um, yeah, so really excited about the possibility. So we're, as you said, my head is a little bit on fire just because there's, there are a lot of possibilities, but, you know, at the end of the day, what you need to do is you need to solve a problem, right? Like, you know, you can, yeah. you can come up with all these crazy things, but, are people going to use them? Are people going to care? Are people going to find value in that? That's that's what it comes. That's that's what it's all about. It's about creating value to real users. Yeah. Um, um, I had one last question for you as well. Um, is this available on an app yet? Like, can one use it on one's phone, or is it just on the I mean, browser at the minute? Yeah, it's just on browser. You can use it on your mobile. You can, you know, uh, you can you can you have a mobile view, so you can see it as if it was a mobile. Um, you know. Oh, there's something wrong here. Interesting. Are you planning um, on Are you planning on making it available on mobile? Is that Is that on the roadmap? Well, it's available on mobile as a as a as a browser. Yeah, as a browser, browser, but not as an app. Um, that's something that we can we can probably do at some point. But I think the ecosystem is going to change so much that we're not going to need to. Um, and and the reason for that is. At the end of the day, we are still dependent on users knowing what a lightning address is, knowing what lightning is. And so the way that I see it is, I think the ecosystem is gonna move in such a way that we're gonna see these, like a transformation of what the everything app is. And I think you will start seeing this this new, I, I call them sort of protocol wars, you know, I think, Things like Noster are in competition with other protocols out there, including slash tags, um, including Fediment, right? All these are different attempts at, at creating the seamless kind of uh, decentralized system. And what you're going to start seeing is some platforms are going to become where you store your data, where you store your, your, um, your private keys, right? And we don't want to be custodying the private keys necessarily, mm -hmm. but if you have one of these apps, right? It could be Damus, it could be, maybe it's a lightning wallet. Maybe Wallet of Satoshi becomes this everything app. Well, Geyser could be an app inside that, right? So you just have to install the wallet and Geyser is just a tool inside the wallet. Right. So we don't have to create an entire, like, because we still depend on users learn, knowing, knowing what lightning is and you, having a lightning address. And then, I'm, and so, we might as well just become that micro app inside the zap. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Yeah. Yeah, that really does. That's really fascinating. Wow. It's incredible what you've managed to build in just one year. It's kind of nuts. And I can't believe you've got like over 300 projects on there now. It's really insane. Um, yeah, so, yeah. so um, I guess just before we close out, I just wanted to say, can you tell people where they can find you so you know, your social media addresses the url like everything else where should they go to find geyser definitely so we're always very open to to chat um if you have any ideas projects to launch you can just go ahead 
open to to discuss. But um, yeah, you can find me at Geyser Fund uh, on Twitter and Noster, or uh, at MetaMake14 on Twitter and Noster, and also on Telegram at uh, MetaMake14 as well. And um, yeah, email hello at geyserfund.com. Um, and yeah, you can just you know tag us anywhere, and we can we can get in touch. Sorry, is it hello at geyserfund.com, not hello at geyser.fund? All right. Uh, so the email is hello at geyser.fund, but oh, okay. the, the website is geyser.fund. So if you want to go to, to our platform, just go geyser.fund. Okay, so geyser.fund for, for the URL, hello at geyser.fund for the email, and then your metamic14 on Twitter and, sorry, did you say it was Telegram? Twitter, Telegram, and Nasser should all be you should be able to find me. Listen. Okay, perfect. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, Mike. This has been really helpful. Um, it's really nice to kind of see where the platform is and where it's going. And when is the tag feature released? You said that's coming out today. Today, yeah, it's coming. So when okay. you, when people listen to this, you should see it. Okay, perfect. So by the time I get this out, then people can actually go. I'll put all the links there so they can see them. But thank you. This has been okay. really, really cool. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for the invite. And yeah, I really enjoyed that.